first question, I suppose, when you got the call saying, hey, Max, want to be in a Saw movie? What was your reaction? <laughs> um, I remember that phone call. Um, it was um, it was really exciting, um, to be honest. Uh, I didn't know anything about what it was going to be, though. Mm. So that was the most exciting part because all I knew was, you know, there was, you know, maybe interested in me doing the movie, but I didn't know what the part was going to be. And I didn't know what the story was. So my expect my expectations were pretty low. I kind of thought I was gonna be playing like a pizza delivery boy or something. <laughs> and um, which I would have, by the way, been thrilled about. <laughs> so yeah. when I when I got the script and I found out that it was, you know, a role that's very meaningful and um, I think more importantly was in a genre space that is really um, special to me personally. You know, um, I grew up on buddy cop movies. I mean, truly, mm -hmm. like Beverly Hills Cop and Lethal Weapon 2 and uh, 48 Hours. These, these are kind of the movies that shaped me as a kid. Yeah. Um, and to have the privilege of kind of getting to be in one of them is just kind of crazy. Yeah, and as you say, there's such a body cop atmosphere there. Also, I thought it's interesting how the police are portrayed, you know, there's such a big theme of corruption there. Was that something that also drew you in that sort of moral aspect? Well, I think that's the success of all the Saw movies. Um, I don't think we can take credit for that. You know, all of, all of them have had these questions of judgment and justice and redemption and um you know what is a correct moral compass these are all kind of the intrinsic uh skeleton of 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 what makes a saw movie so um that's i think a part of why they're successful and have had longevity mm. You have some great scenes with Chris, especially early on when he's going on about his marriage and it's very funny. You, know, What is the atmosphere like on set when Chris is there? Because I imagine he's a bit of a joker. He is. And he's also just a really generous person. That's the word I always think of when I think of working with him. Um, I, I've never worked with an actor, I can say this, who's, who's this supportive. He really mm. was incredibly supportive and present. And the first guy on set, last guy to leave. But just a you know real professional and for sam jackson by the way the same just yeah. like there is a correlation in my career of working with successful people um being the nicest people you know it just seems to always be the case so i think being around that really hopefully rubs off on you a little bit yeah. of professionalism yeah and it must be an exciting seeing the saw traps in person you know what was that like on set it's amazing I mean, on this one, like the subway set was built completely. Oh, wow. Uh, it's an amazing thing to see. And um, the traps are often functional and uh, these feats of engineering. So yeah, <laughs> it's hard not to geek out when you see it all. Yeah. And did you revisit any of the Saw movies before going to shoot this one? Or were you, you know, such a big fan already, you kind of know it all? <laughs> I'd seen, no, I'd seen the first few movies, but I definitely wanted to watch them all. Um, and have context for, for this, you know, them, these movies are made for the fans. I, you know, <laughs> it's amazing how conscious the filmmakers are of that relationship. Um, and so we wanted to be conscious of it too as, as actors. What is your personal favorite trap, from, whether it's from Spiral or throughout the uh, whole series? Um, I'm biased, so I'm going to say the subway <laughs> trap from Spiral. I think it's just the coolest one. It's um, it's got amazing scope to it and I love the quandary of it. Yeah, yeah. It's you. It's intense, that one, for sure. 